1432, Portuguese explorers discovered the Azores Islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. But they were not the first people here. These early Portuguese explorers reported finding no one currently inhabiting any of the islands. But what they did find was shocking. On the small island of Corvo, atop a huge volcanic mountain, the Portuguese explorers said they saw a giant ancient statue of a man riding a horse with no saddle, with one hand grabbing the mane of the horse, and the other pointing directly westward with his index finger. But how could this be? A statue on an island in the middle of the Atlantic pointing west directly at the Americas? It makes no sense with our mainstream understanding of history. They reported the statue as being extremely eroded by the harsh sea winds, so much so that the only part of the statue that had any discernible detail was the head and face of the man. This pointed to it having extremely ancient origins. The locals of this area claim it to have been the inspiration that pointed explorers like Christopher Columbus and Pedro Alvarez Cabral towards the Americas. We know both of these explorers frequented the Azores, so they must have seen the statue. The statue was also said by the early explorers to have a short inscription under it that was barely legible and in a language unknown to the men. Later in the 1500s, King Dom Manuel of Portugal ordered the statue be dismantled and brought to Lisbon to be displayed in a museum. The statue was broken down into pieces and displayed in Portugal, but records of it were eventually lost and it hasn't been seen in hundreds of years. It's possible it exists somewhere out there, either in a private collection or some old forgotten museum archives, or even at the Vatican. But even if it does exist, it's likely severely damaged, and it was said to be extremely eroded to begin with. But if any of you watching ever do work at a museum in Portugal, you know what to do. But yeah, so there's a lot of theories about who created this statue. The most prominent of which is that it was the Phoenicians. And this makes a lot of sense. We have so many theories about the Phoenicians making it to America. They were expert seagoers and possessed technology for navigation that would seem advanced to us even today. They most likely had technologies like the Antikythera mechanism for tracking stars and movements in the heavens so they could traverse the oceans with ease. We have archaeological evidence that they completely circumnavigated Africa, traveled as far east as China and India, and even traveled to northern Europe. And yes, they were also in the Canary and Azores Islands too. Archaeologists have found Carthaginian coins and ruins of temples built by the Phoenician Carthaginians. They found coins on the very same island the horse statue was said to be on, from Phoenicians dating back to 200 BC. So in 200 BC, the Phoenicians had a statue of a man on a horse pointing west towards the Americas in the Azores Islands. But by the 1400s, there was nobody on the island at all. Where did they go? Maybe they constructed the horsemen when they left to show other Phoenicians where their new settlement was. Just a theory. Many researchers have pointed out certain similarities to Phoenicians in some Native American cultures, and there have been several artifacts found around the U.S. that suggest possible Phoenician contact. There's also stories of lost advanced civilizations existing in the Americas. Stories like that of Norm Bega in Vinland in the East, and El Dorado in South America. LiDAR scanning has even definitively proven that a huge complex civilization existed along the shores of the Amazon River up until the 1500s, when it was taken out by disease most likely, and swallowed by the rainforest. The Phoenicians also had extremely close ties with the Israelite nations, who were rumored to have visited the Americas in several traditions. And I go more into detail on this topic in my video titled, Solomon the First King of Tartaria. The Phoenicians, later Greeks and Romans, and the Mediterranean people as a whole were also always making statues. Not far would have been the statue of Hercules at the Strait of Gibraltar, and then there was the ancient Colossus statue, as well as many others. If the horseman statue at Corvo did really exist, it would make sense for it to have been Phoenicians based on the historical record of the island and the reported erosion on the statue. However, there's a few other theories as well. The first is the Vikings. Apparently, mouse DNA in the Azores points to northern European origins, so historians have concluded that the Vikings most likely visited these islands around the 8th century AD. So either the Vikings created the statue, which wouldn't make a lot of sense based off their practices, or the Phoenicians had built it earlier. It's important, I think, to point out that many researchers have made connections between the Phoenicians and the Norse people. For one example, the Phoenician triremes are extremely similar to the early Viking ships, but that's a topic for another video. The other theory is that the Templars built this statue, which I think could be a possibility. The Templars could have come here when they were escaping prosecution from the Catholics and built this statue showing the way to their secret settlement in the Americas for other displaced knights. We know they used many symbols and codes to travel through the underground to get away from France and the Pope. 
There's all kinds of evidence in the Americas for possible Templar voyages, and this statue just sounds like a Templar symbol in some ways. They use the horseman symbol quite a bit, and the index finger pointed forward just strikes me as some kind of secret occult symbol. It's also interesting to note that there's a map from 1351 known as the Medici Atlas that some scholars say depicts the Azores Islands. If this is the case, then that means that the elites of Europe knew about the Azores long before the Portuguese. And if they knew of the Azores, they must have known about the statue pointing to the Americas. Either that or they were the ones who created it. Also for reference, the Templars were disbanded in 1312, so it's possible they came to the Azores with this knowledge of the Medici Atlas and created the statue to guide their fellow knights. This is all covered in my video titled 1398 Templar Voyage to America. Final theory about the statue is that it's much more ancient than all of this. The Azores Islands are known for being the exact spot Plato described Atlantis to be. People have searched for underwater ruins in this area for quite some time but haven't found anything definitive. Some suggest that the horseman statue on Corvo was Atlantean, and they point to the heavy erosion and unknown undeciphered language in the inscription. Or maybe the statue was pointing to Atlantis. Whoever built it had the knowledge of the Americas and wanted to show others that there was land to the west of the Azores. If you ask any of the locals in Corvo, they'll tell you that all these things are true, and that the statue guided the early explorers to America, and its origins date back to a long-forgotten ancient past on the islands. Even though the statue has been lost to history, the culture on Corvo still incorporates it into their traditions and believe in the stories told by their predecessors. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this statue down in the comments below. This has been Tales of the Old World. See you next time.